We all know Clayton Kershaw is one of the best pitchers of the 21st century, but even the most dominant pitchers have their kryptonite, and Kershaw's just so happens to be the postseason. It all began on the day of my actual birth. Both of my parents failed to show up. Kershaw got off on a strong foot as his postseason debut was against the Phillies in the 2008 NLCS. Kershaw did good in Game 2 by going 1 and 2 thirds innings without allowing a hit. Game 4 was a different story. Kershaw came in with a one-run lead in the 6th, but he walked Ryan Howard, which, okay, understandable. He is capable of hitting absolute... Wait, was that in the third deck? But anyway, he gets unlucky here as Raphael Fercal misses a grounder. The next hitter, Shane Victorino, bunted, which both advanced the runners and ended up kicking Kershaw off the mound. But when Chan Ho Park allows Howard to score on a wild pitch, it counts as an earned run for Kershaw, so that's neat. Kershaw would get his first playoff start in Game 2 of the 2009 NLDS against the Cardinals. It didn't look to be going so great at first. His first home run allowed. Not a great way to start your first start. But hey, he rebounded by pitching until the 7th and only allowing one more run, which was enough to give him his first career playoff win. However, Game 1 of the NLCS was where the playoff Kershaw moniker started to arrive. As in the 5th, facing off against Carlos Ruiz, he got beat. Driven down the left field line and deep and gone! And then Kershaw walked Cole Hamels, the pitcher, on four pitches. Control issues? Well... But he's down by a couple of runs. An 0-2 pitch, swung on and missed. That bounces away from Martin. And uh, Victorino... is called out. Now Victorino is out because first base was occupied and Jimmy Rollins moves up on the wild pitch. You want to see me do it again? That one pops away from Martin, and Rollins will move up to third. So yeah, two wild pitches later, and wait a minute, is that Russell Martin? No way! He's the guy who hit Shin Su Chu's bat against the Rangers in 2015. Oh wait, and that's Cole Hamels, he was also on that Rangers team, no way! Anyway, Kershaw picks a really bad time to allow a double. Driven into the right field corner, and that's big time trouble. Rollins scores, Utley around third, they're gonna wave him. Here's the throw to the play, not in time! And that was it for Kershaw on the night, as he got the loss because of those five earned runs. In game five, he came in down 6-3 in the fifth, and he did not make things any better by beaning Jimmy Rollins, and then... Swing and a drive! No doubt about it! Yeah, not great. His postseason ERA was now at 587. But hey, don't feel bad, Kershi. It's gonna get worse. Some people call it warmer. Kershaw was up to this point pretty good. Here in 2013, he has one Cy Young Award, one runner up award, and he's gonna tack on another Cy Young Award in the 2013 season, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. He's thrice been an all star, and who knows, maybe he can get it together in the playoffs a little bit. It sure looked that way against Atlanta in the NLDS, as Kershaw only allowed one earned run in 13 innings of work. But as they say, what goes up must come down, and so in the NLCS against the Cards, he didn't do horrible in game two, honestly, only allowing one run in six innings, but that gave him the loss because apparently the Dodgers offense was trash. Game six, however, oh boy, y'all ain't ready for this. Okay, RBI double from Carlos Beltran. Beltran, in the right field, base hit. Carpenter is around third. He will score, and the Cardinals are on top, one to nothing. RBI single from Yadier Molina. And that might be it. It will be. Beltron scores. Molina makes it 2-0 St. Louis. A bases loaded RBI double from Shane Robinson. Through the right side, base hit Robinson. 
One run scores. The throw to the plate is high. The second run scores. And runners are at second and third. And finally, Matt Adams gets an RBI double that kicks Kershaw off the mound. Adams goes the other way toward the line and left. Fair ball into the corner. Molina scores easily. Freeze is at third. Adams at second. 5 nothing, St. Louis. But just you wait, we ain't through yet, as those guys on third and second still count towards Kershaw's ERA, even though he isn't the one that allows the hit that scores them. On the ground to second, he'll come to the plate, and it's late! You want to see me do it again? In the air to left, Crawford back, Robinson tags, he'll score, it is seven to nothing. You want to see me do it again? Inside ball bounces away, and Cosma is going to score. You want to see me do it again? Beltran with a bullet to left. 9 nothing. So, yeah, that game dragged Kershaw's postseason ERA from 2.88 to 4.23. That's bad, but Kershaw bounced back and won 2014 NL MVP, as well as his third Cy Young Award. But, in the 2014 NLDS against the Cardinals, again, you would not have known it. Seventh pitch of the game, and Randall Grichuk took him yard. That is hammered down the line and left into the corner. It is gone. Randall Grichuk puts the Cardinals on the board in the first inning with a home run right down the line. But it's fine, they still have the lead in the sixth where... Here's Carpenter getting one into the air, into right, back at the wall, it's gone. Two solo home runs tonight for St. Louis, one by Pritchett, this one by Carpenter. They throw it back in the outfield and it's a 6-2 game. It's fine, Kershaw, those are just two solo shots and uh-oh, bases are loaded. That's in the center of base hit. That's four straight. And the score is Holiday, and it's a 6-3 game. Okay, a single, that's fine, that's whatever. Base hit left field. And the score is Peralta, stopping at third is Molina. And it's a 6-4 game. Another single? Uh, Kershaw? In the air to right center. Back at the wall, it is off the base of the wall. The Cardinals are going to take the lead. Carpenter has emptied the bench. The bases and with the three-run double, St. Louis jumps on top. Cardinals, please stop. I beg of thee. Here's a high fly ball to left. Back at the wall. It is gone. A three-run home run for Matt Holliday. And just like that, it's 10-6 St. Louis in the seventh. Kershaw just keeps racking in the accolades. But in the 2015 NLDS, Kershaw was doing fine until the top of the fourth inning, where Daniel Murphy took him deep. 2-0 from Kershaw comes, it's whacked in the air, deep to right field. That ball is going to go! Daniel Murphy parks it in the bullpen! The Mets have the lead! one nothing here in the fourth! And if Clayton Kershaw is trying to avoid flashing back, he's doing a good job of hiding it. But this is what killed him in the postseason last year. Homers to lefties. And he didn't help matters by loading up the bases in the seventh in time for Pedro Baez to come in and give Kershaw the earned runs. The pitch. Swing and a shot towards center. Base hit, David Wright. Two runs are going to score. Granderson races to third. He's there. Mets three. And the Dodgers nothing. And although he got the win in game four, he gave up another homer to Daniel Murphy, and the Dodgers would end up losing in five. Say the line, Bart! Corral! Yay! 
in the 2016 NLDS with runners on first and second with two outs in the bottom of the third, Kershaw delivered a pitch in the dirt that sent the runners to third and second, which meant that this Anthony Rendon single scored both runners instead of just one. Kershaw also allowed a sacrifice fly in the fourth, but it's okay as the Dodgers ended up winning the game. In game four, facing elimination, Kershaw was sent out to try and keep the season alive, but up to bat came an old foe. To make sure he goes. Murphy with a base hit into right field. Here's Turner heading home, and the Nationals take a 1 0 lead. Fast forward to the third, and no way. Left center. Peterson makes the catch. Here comes Turner. He will score easily. The Nationals have tied the game at two. I hear no man, but that thing. In the seventh, Kershaw loaded up the bases for Pedro Baez, who after hitting Jason Wirth, gets pulled for Luis Avalon, who seemed to inherit Kershaw's bad juju, because Daniel Murphy got him again. The 1-0 to Murphy. And Murphy with a base hit into left center. Turner scores. Here comes Harper. This game is tied at five. The Dodgers finished that series by putting Kershaw on the mound, needing only one out with two men on. And surprisingly, it worked. The Los Angeles Dodgers are headed to Chicago. In the NLCS, Kershaw started out strong, taking a two-hitter into the seventh where he was replaced by Kenley Jansen, who finished the game equally strong. Game six was a different story. The Dodgers needed to win to force a Game 7. Kershaw, however, was clearly not included in on the memo, as he gave up an RBI single to Briss Cryant. His right fielder, Andrew Tolles, didn't give him any help. Kershey then allowed a sack fly to Ben Zobrist. Zobrist into right center field, going to get it, Peterson, tagging Bryant, tagging Rizzo, 2 nothing runner at third, one out. Then an RBI single to Dexter Fowler. Then Wilson Contreras took him deep. And then Anthony Rizzo made it 5 0, and the Cubs were finally NL champions. A smart, terrific manager in Joe Madden. High fly. Into right. At the wall. Come on. 5 0 Chicago. Rizzo. In 2017, the Dodgers were prepared and ready for a World Series appearance after having lost in the NLCS four times since 2008. They would face the division rival Diamondbacks in the NLDS, who in Game 1 would take Kershaw deep, not once. More than that. Pollock sends one deep in the left, Granderson on the run, looking up, goodbye! A.J. Pollock with a solo shot. Not twice with his body. Big curve launched down the left field line. That is way back. And it is a fair ball home run for J.D. Martinez. A mile high. Not three times. And a shot down the left field line. That's a hot one and it's out of here. A line drive bullet of a home run by Cattell Marte. But oh my gosh, four times. And is that Jeff Mathis? The same Jeff Mathis who is one of the worst hitters of all time?
But yeah, those were all solo shots, which wasn't enough to beat the Dodgers, so Kershaw somehow got the win. In the NLCS, the Dodgers awaited a rematch with the Cubs. In his Game 1 start, Kershaw allowed a two-run home run to Albert Almora. There's a drive in the left field. Almora's watching this one, and it is gone! Two-run home run, Albert Almora! But those were the only two runs allowed by the Dodgers, and L.A. took Game 1. It was all Dodgers in Game 5, as Kershaw only allowed one run, a home run by Briss Cryant in the fourth, that didn't really do anything to affect the game. And just like that, the Dodgers were finally going to the World Series, where Kershaw would have a chance to win his first World Series ring. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. In Game 1, Kershaw was doing pretty good protecting his 1-0 lead, until Lance Bregman decided to take him deep. That is hit well to left. Back at the wall, this game is tied. Alex Bregman, his third home run of the postseason, and just like that, it's 1-1 in the fourth. But other than that, Kershaw did great, striking out 11 in his World Series debut. In a 2-2 series, Kershaw was given the task of giving the Dodgers a 3-2 lead. And he did great! In the first, he got some big help from his offense, and he returned the favor by only allowing one hit through the first three innings. His offense gave him a little bit more leeway via an Austin Barnes RBI single, and that was it. Kershaw could easily coast to a 4-0 victory, which made the series 3-2. Or that, that, it's not horrible, Kershaw, just get a double play and you're good. Had him reaching for it, fly ball to left center. Hernandez, one out. Okay, whatever. Now the double play, right, Kershaw? Two two. That's into left field, a base hit. There's life for Houston here in the fourth. Okay, Kershaw. I know you can get Carl. Oh, that's a double. Springer will come to the plate. Altuve over to third. Into second, Correa. It's four to one. <sighs> okay, Clayton, you are two wins away from a World Series ring. Altuve's on third, Correa's on second, one out, bottom of the fourth. Surely, you can just get this one guy out. It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. That's right, this gets its own chapter. Altuve. Second and third, one out. <laughs> the brave one. Uh, Steve, you're sitting on the remote. Oh, sorry, I thought it was a brownie. Correll has tied it! Wow! 'But wait, it gets worse because although not pitching here, Kershaw still put the runners on base, which means they count towards his ERA. Another 3-2 and a fly ball deep left center field. At the wall, tie the game. Unbelievable. Altuve, 
Kershaw made an appearance in Game 7, going four innings and only allowing two hits, which broke his streak of four consecutive games with a home run allowed. But the Dodgers lost, and because I feel like it, can we replay that homer again? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't heard nothing yet. Kershaw was all of a sudden bad. For the first time since 2010, he wasn't an all-star, and he didn't even place in the MVP or Cy Young votes. What a bum. Anywho, the Dodgers made it back to the NLCS where Kershaw started game one. Incredibly enough, Brandon Woodruff, a relief pitcher, took him yard in the third. Back at the wall, are you kidding? Home run, Woodruff, 1-1 one, one in game one. Later in the inning, he loaded up the bases in time for a sack fly. And a fly ball into shallow center. Tagging is Kane. Bellinger's throw is too late. It gets away from Grandal, and the runners advance to second and third. And this is a nightmare for the Dodger catcher. Kershaw then allowed runners on second and third, which was a nice way to tee up Domingo Santana for an RBI single. And that's in a left to hit. And to score Pena. Arcia coming to the plate. No throw. Four to one. That's it for the lefty. But Kershaw rectified things in Game 5 by only allowing one run in his seven innings of work. And in Game 7, Kershaw got to stand on the mound and close out the game, sending the Dodgers to the World Series. The Dodgers have won the pennant. Back to the World Series they go. A final of 5-1. to one. There they would face the Boston Red Sox, and Kershaw would get the start in game one, and he would immediately give up an RBI single in the first. Right side, base hit. Here comes Betts. Queen comes up throwing. Throw no good, too high. Down to second, Ben Intendi. One to nothing, Boston in the first. Then another. Need to go to second, and Ben Intendi will come to the plate. On an RBI base hit by Martinez, it's two to nothing. And in the third, he nearly gave up a home run to J.D. Martinez. Wide into center field, back at the wall, it is off the wall. Right around third is Pierce. Red Sox regain the lead, it's 3-2. Plus tack on a single and a walk that both eventually scored. In Game 5, the Dodgers were down 3-1. The last thing they needed was a back-breaking two-run home. Here sits one in the air to left center field. Back at the wall, there will be no zero. Pierce has got another. 2-0 Boston in the first. Okay, Kershaw, just don't do it. High fly ball into left. Back at the wall, it is gone. Betts has made it 3-1. Kershaw, please get it to high fly ball into center. Back at the wall, it is gone. Martinez goes deep. Four to one, Boston here in the seventh. Okay, whatever. I don't. I don't care. Can we just skip to the next season now? Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. The Dodgers were still chasing that World Series trophy as Kershaw was now an All Star again. And perhaps haunted by the memories of Daniel Murphy a few years prior, Kershaw gave up an RBI single in the first inning, and then another one in the second. Base hit left center field. Robles has great speed. He will score easily. And Adam Eaton with his first hit of this postseason, and it couldn't have come at a better time. It's 2 0 Nats. Followed quickly by an RBI double in the very next at bat. Last weekend of the regular season, and Rendon launches to left center field. That is off the wall. Eaton is around third. He will score. Rendon, a run scoring double, and it's 3 0 Nationals. But still, the Dodgers were easily poised to head to another NLCS, up 3 0 in the top of the seventh. All they needed were seven more outs. Then Kershaw entered the game, and he got that first out. It was looking good. He was all fine. And uh-oh. Taylor goes back to the wall, and it's gone. Anthony Rendon, a leadoff homer in the eighth, and it is a one-run game. Watch his body language here. 
Yeah, he 100% knew that, that was gone the second it came off the bat. And now watch his body language here. In the air to deep right center field, and there she goes. We are tied. Much less subtle this time, isn't it? But hey, Dodgers fans, it could be worse. Oh, hey, that's right, it got worse. This is deep to center field. Bellinger's back, it's a grand slam! Howie Kendrick with a 10th inning grand slam to break it open. The first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. The second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. <laughs> Well, I'll be honest, I don't really understand, but I fell down the ceiling and I 